Welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. I'm going to be talking about the blue line color method uh, today on Cartoonist Kayfabe. But first, you must know that uh, the videos are brought to you by the comic books that we make on the stands right now today. Red Room, the Anti-Social Network, Red Room Trigger Warnings, Murder on the Dark Web for Fun and Profit is the name of the game in the Red Room universe, and each of these volumes contains four complete horror stories with 70 pages of additional material uh, inside those covers that you're not going to be able to find anywhere else. Jimmy has on the racks Hulk Grand Design Monster and Madness uh, in issue format. These are going quick, and got to put your pre-orders in right away for the Hulk Grand Design uh, Treasury Edition which is coming out in early 2023. Marvel needs to know how many of those things to, to, to print when, when the time comes, and uh, you do not want to miss out on that. Speaking of which, Street Angel Deadly is Scroll Alive is back in uh, print after uh, about a year out of being out of print, uh, so you know how these things can disappear. Eight complete Street Angel comics inside the covers uh, of this big uh, Street Angel book. Get your hands on that ASAP. If you guys are on my Patreon, you've been seeing that I've been serializing uh, the Latchkey Kids License to Kill comic. I'm doing a couple of backups in my next round of, uh, you can keep that there, I'm do, uh, in, in uh, my next round of, of Red Room, and I'm do, do, playing around with some different materials, you know. We've been talking about, uh, we often talk about the blue line method when uh, we're looking at various comics, and I thought it would be cool to uh, do a video talking about the blue line method. And it's kind of place in comics production now. So uh, for nearly a hundred years, comics production was the same. It's the dot colors that, that you uh, are familiar with, with like, you know, Roy Lichtenstein paintings or whatever. It's still the same deal. CMYK, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. Except that uh, you need like black uh, zipatone, basically for each layer of color that you're cutting. There's a guide that you could look at, you know, skin tone is 25% yellow, 25% uh, magenta. Then you get that peach Caucasian skin tone. At some point, they were able to do some more expensive stuff and use photography and uh, this process that we, we call blue line. You can see the blue lines there where you take the line art from you know, an actual drawing, which would be this material here. You would be able to run it through a chemical process to create, basically it's the same, uh, it's the same stuff that, that um, blueprints are made from, the same kind of chemical treatment to have that. Uh, the thing about the, the blue is that it's typically non-reproducible by and large, you know, might show up or, or whatever. Um, print it out on some nice paper and then you could add your own your own washes and and things to it so that you're not using the same color treatment that uh, you did for years and years before. Uh, one of the apex pieces probably like Dark Knight Returns, where Lynn Varley is doing all kinds of washes and airbrushing and and all sorts of stuff, uh, so that you could just you add a lot of nuance to yeah, the color. This became popular. Whenever um, other like indie comics publishers start popping up in the U.S. in the early '80s, yeah, with the and that'd be like Eclipse, uh, you know, would probably be the example. But the idea was to try to bring something to make your books look better than a Marvel DC book. Yes, because they're using those traditional processes that you talk about, you know, where you've got sixty colors and really you probably have about fifteen colors. Right. So, you know, the idea that you could do full color, like real true full color, was something that these upstart publishers thought they could have a competitive advantage over a Marvel DC. Their books could look better because yes. it's tough. Marvel DC kind of owned that corner. How are you going to be stand out? How are you going to get some of the money that would have been going to Spider-Man? And that was one of the things that they felt they could do is bring better production values. So you would get blue line. There was also something called gray line, which same exact concept. It's just, it's a 10% black instead of a, you know, a, a light cyan. 15% cyan. Right, exactly. But same concept, just super light. That way it wouldn't reproduce or barely be visible, but it would allow a painter to work over top of it and see what the artwork is. I would call this a Generation 2 blue line uh, because they were smart enough to omit the lettering. And if you look at some of the old Pacific comics and right. things, uh, they would allow the lettering to be in the blue line also. And what would happen is during the, the printing process, there would be a shift with the black line and you would see the blue kind of uh, halo or, yeah. or drop shadow. Uh, so you got to 
you got to get that out of there. Uh, that's what I ended up doing with with the blue lines on my stuff, which is the process that I went through on this uh, this latest comic that uh, I'm I'm serializing uh, on uh, on my Patreon, which will be backup stories in the next round of uh, of Red Room. Um, this kind of process still has a place uh, in modern day comics, uh, even if you don't even do anything analog, because uh, the beauty of having a separate black layer and a separate color layer is that uh, your blacks can be true black as opposed to if you did it all on one page then uh, your entire piece of artwork would just be a piece of CMYK when it's translated into the uh, computer and you could have some off registration your, your, your lettering won't be as clear potentially and uh, the cool thing about doing it separately is you could have like a 1200 DPI bitmap black layer which would be crucial for somebody who has very precise sharp lines it's a very crisp read and color is almost never more than 300 dpi even though i scan it for yeah and uh through what's that what's the uh adobe InDesign. indesign you can you can uh layer those over top of each other so that when it's printed it's your best shot having perfect uh black artwork with black lettering that isn't fuzzy. Yeah, crisp, very crisp lines. Super crisp. Yeah, and I would say people interested in this, I interviewed Sean Michael Robinson and he kind of talks about some of these pieces Yeah, and how to get the best color scan, how to get the best line art scan. Um, there's information out there on these things. Yes. And you really can see a difference between uh, doing it right and wrong in the production tools now because like printing like everything else has evolved and we're at a place where you can print super sharp crisp black lines but you got to prep the artwork yes to get there one of the things that i'm super happy about looking at this mobius piece or a Mignola piece man is uh that they color in the dialogue bubbles mm -hmm. for just like that like a little added piece yeah slightly off white yeah and there is a copic marker called eggshell to just separate that that paper texture from from the background, uh, latchkey kids in from the last millennium or is this new gang of characters that I'm playing around with. I'm going to do a couple of backups in Red Room, and then I'm going to focus on these characters for for some time. Do a bigger book, but one of the things that I wanted to do, and this is a kayfabe page because it was my first uh, attempt, but I wanted to show, I wanted to show uh, the lettering so that you see this piece. Um, but I'm using all of the materials that I feel like a kid this age would use to to to, to make a comic. Certainly, the the materials that I used to make uh, comics when when I when I was little, markers, color pencil. Only difference is white gel pen and and um, like Copic marker, like uh, fine liners, microns. You know, it's all it's all the same stuff. Uh, knowing that I was going to be doing. Um, this story that takes place like in uh, in the woods, I gave myself uh, a subject matter that I didn't have to draw so many backgrounds and I could do so much of it practically in the color. So uh, it felt weird, Jimmy, to just not have any idea. I mean, I had some idea of what was going to happen, but not exactly. And just drawing, just plain characters, it felt odd it felt like driving on the wrong side of the road or something because that just it's so spare for what i what i do and uh doing the color stuff what i ended up doing was um like one marker like pull out one marker and then every application of that marker on across eight pages and i would just you know hit hit that marker on every single page for like the base color uh this green this like very like kind of light green yellowish green would be the base of all of the forest panels so that I can then go in with color pencil and pull out different shapes in terms of bushes, uh, go in there with brown color pencil for a tree bark, and then even hit some uh, white gel pen even on the uh, color pencil and it, and it seemed to work out. And then uh, I'll, I'll cut in different um, panels and things where I merge the two so that you could see you know, how how these uh, pieces look over top of one another. But, like, look at how spare this is. Right. And then you see just so much more stuff added. It's a nice effect for making a character pop because the character gets the black line. 
Yes. And then your background looks good, but it doesn't uh, doesn't have the contrast yes. to compete with you know foreground background. Absolutely, man. And that was total uh, conscious decision to just kind of fuzz out the background, let it be soft focus. Also, the characters get very vibrant marker color, and there's just base level color that's being done with with marker for the, for the backgrounds and things. This is a story about lantern flies. Like, what happens if you give a bunch of uh, like '90s kids uh, the go ahead to uh, to kill bugs for the environment, <laughs> and how that can go off the rails? I love that it's a cartoon bug. Yeah, totally. <laughs> I feel like in wrestling talks. terms, it's like a working bug. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it even kind of talks. Been looking at that Teriyama artwork. Uh, been reading that stuff and trying to figure out ways to make comics faster. And this kind of subject matter kind of lends to uh, just wh whimsy, where you can do shit like that, man. In my universe, you could do that sort of thing. What you looking at, Jimmy? I'm I'm thinking about all of it. Whenever you talk about going faster, it's kind of like the background's not drawn but colored. Yeah. You know, that's a speed move probably, I would imagine. Yeah. But I feel like it's a good move in terms of the final piece. I think so. So like it's interesting, like the stuff that works both ways where it's like, this is better end result, but it's also faster. Yeah. Yeah. It, um, I, I had no sense of if I was making good time while I was putting these pages together. How would you tell on a first time though? You know? And it was also using that same marker across all the pages, So like all the yellow. Yeah. And, and there's never like, you know, this page did not get done in a day. The next page did not get done. In, it's it's little bits across eight pieces of paper. And I'm like, I have no clue. It took me a week for, from like the end of one kayfabe session to the next. I had it done. So I think that that worked out. But one of the um, important pieces definitely is that uh, white gel pen yeah. to kind of add these little pops and things. Yeah, that's a huge piece. Anytime you see marker art, I feel like, even painting, I feel like that highlight yeah. is, a, is a really big piece. You know what's great about this stuff, though, is you want to show people something they haven't seen before. For sure. And and so much of comics production is sort of the same across, you know, all of our, our practices. This is legit different. Yeah. Like, the end result is going to be that the, these printed pages look different than 99% of what you see on a rack. Yes. There's a lot of value in that, at least to me. Me too, totally. Uh, it engages me in a, in a fun way, personally, to just, like, get the hands dirty. I, I used to color, like, in my sketchbooks and stuff, I would have Copic markers, and, or Prismacolor markers and color pencils, and I was looking through some of that shit, and it's like, you can do that in, in comics, and it doesn't look hacky Absolutely. or, or schlocky or, uh, you know, anything like that. I'm glad you're doing this and talking about it, too, because it also gives people permission to do this yeah like when i started doing the ballpoint pen stuff part of it was that it feels good to just draw on paper totally that's my deal so, you know you know everybody watching like that's a thing you can do that if you get tired of staring at screens like pull out your markers totally colored pencils you know whatever you've got like you can make make that work and you know if you look at this on a screen like if you look at a regular comic book page on a screen this is kind of what it looks like. You turn off your ink right. layer and, 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 you know, this is the same pieces, like you said at the beginning, in terms of like, this is the analog piece, but it's the same process. It just allows you to look at a, look at a piece of paper instead of looking at your screen. And there's little bits of texture that, that come through very hard to do digitally. Yeah. It's, it's like, don't, don't bother. No, don't bother. If you're going to go digital, Work with the tools that you get there. Don't try to make it look like this. If you want it to look like this, work on paper. Right. This is one of those. This is one of those panels that, uh, man. If I did a couple of dozen more of these pages, this I just know that this end piece will look so d much different because I wanted to have the characters lit by the fire. Mm -hmm. And what I ended up doing, I thought the Prismacolor markers, I mean the Prismacolor pencils, would lay over top of the the um, more opaque. And so I did a test uh, where, like, I colored them with their natural, like, flesh tones. And then I put, like, maybe green over top, and it just did not work. Yeah. It, it, it was too, um, too translucent. Uh, so I just know that if I did this again later after more confidence and things, like, this panel would look so much different because they would be lit by the fires and stuff. Well, you know, of course, the other thing you can do is digital. at some point this does become digital. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. yeah it's true. <laughs> it's true. Like, just for my own edification, like, I really want to figure this all out on the practical level. And, and doing stuff like this, whenever you scan it, um, you're shooting light 
at the page, so it makes things pop. These reds show up so much clearer mm -hmm. uh, on the on the final page, and uh, that like that was a revelation because there are some colors and nuance here that actually don't show up. They're almost close to that non-repro blue uh, sort of thing. Like maybe that is very very light. Yeah. Um, but what they're doing is they are uh, dousing dousing a maggot filled rabbit with a lighter fluid and then shooting Roman candles at it to give it kind of a, a, a Viking's funeral. And up to this point, you saw nothing but greens in the background and stuff. Nothing but greens, lush growth and vegetation. But after you get that first uh, round of fireballs, now we're unorthodox in the panel layouts and, and construction. I actually got, I stole this from your uh, Street Angel Goes to Juvie, where it's all grids in order but then when the jailbreak happens you allow for chaos with the with the panel construction now we're getting hot backgrounds you know and, and vibrant back like very various color like imagining that it's like being lit by the flames and also you're not seeing very much leaves on those trees you know what i mean you're just seeing barks with no vegetation so i don't know how you would answer this but do you think it's because you're working on color by itself like this that you think that way no because i was thinking like i mean if it's a color thing you think in, in in color absolutely and certainly all the shit that we've been looking at uh on the channel were and talking about day after day after day where we're just now consciously like thinking in different terms than we than we may perhaps have working on an intuitive level all by ourselves and thinking about like color as sh scene shift is something that's been in my mind yeah, for a long, long time. Definitely something we've talked about. Still a Nettie P comic, man. So you got your Yeti, your Ohio grass man getting hit with that, getting hit with the uh, Roman candle in one panel, and then the big reveal. He's been in the cut for 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 a while there. Getting this bottom three quarter view was. Took took a couple of tries, man. Yeah, I bet. That, that's a good one, though. It works out. You get a good, clean shot of his mouth. That's what it is, too. Like it's kayfabe in composition. Totally. <laughs> Move that arm around to get get a get a reveal that you like in the face. Yeah, gotta sell it. Gotta sell it, man. But he was fun to play with. I started playing with. I started coloring this page first because I wanted to see the 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 Bigfoot, and then I'm like, man, maybe I should have colored that one last because I would have had just more confidence in the tools. Fire is hard. Hitting the. Uh, the white gel pen, and maybe even this is chunky. I probably use one of those. Um, you know, what's the company that makes that little blue, uh, white out pen? You know, talk about the mm. little. It begins with a P. Um, but just to add some, some environment, some movement, some air, some flow. You know what it is? It's temperature of flame. Like as it gets further away, I think it moves to red. Yeah. And so then, you have like your tops like this. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then this is the, the, the last page of, of this particular strip where the little girl who got hold of her dad's gun dispatches of our guy, <laughs> our, our Yeti, our Ohio grass man, uh, at the very end, takes a good, peels his cap, takes a good chunk out. The girls are just like whistling while cops show up and are like, a goddamn Yeti burnt down the forest. And because the, the pink haired girl's dad is the mayor. They get a key to the city. That's really funny. <laughs> so just showing off some blue blue line uh, is the first time that I ever um, used this method. I'm very excited to do it again. Uh, I'm so happy to see this. I, I didn't know you even had this, Jimmy, because it would have answered some questions that I had because I was wondering if, if guys color like big blue line. I can make an argument for coloring big blue line because the precision with the markers, uh, and it's a pretty fat tip, you are clutching a bit, and I did cause my wrist and elbow discomfort. Uh, and certainly with a color pencil, I'm pushing a little harder. And I don't think I would if I would color on a bigger blue line. Uh, I think Lynn Varley colored Electra big. I think that those pages sense. were bigger. Yeah, that would make sense. But uh, I am going to do another set of uh, blue line strips to just, just fuck with it. Do, make yeah. comics in a little bit of a different way. We do those big, like the other set. Maybe, maybe. Uh, there's there's more expense involved because you're gonna probably ki kill some workers and have to go yeah. buy buy that refill ink. It's like twenty bucks a pop or whatever. But 
That's expense worthy stuff. Hey, I got a layout for it. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Lay out those pages, the color pages all on the screen here. It's really great too. You can see, you mentioned like the green backgrounds in the early pages compared to the orange warms right. of the uh, the chaotic when, when the shit hits the fan. So there it is, man. Just a quick glimpse at uh, the blue line color process uh, and the applications and where it would come into context nowadays by having crisp black ink line, you know, your your fuzzy, fuzzy color that has less dots per inch in your final uh, print files. You know, you mentioned like experimenting with more of these. Yeah. Will you try one where you color on black line? Like you could still have your lettering as a separate layer to get that crispness. But like we've looked at comics where you can see their painting and the color is on the black line. Um, I did it with um, the Hulk cover that Jeff Darrow drew. I printed that out and colored it on the page. And it was, you know, like it worked because the black didn't smear anything. So, yeah. you know, I ended up with that black line. Uh, on the artwork itself. Yeah, Breaking Kayfabe, uh, I, I would have preferred to do the black line because I was looking at your Brigade page mm. and I liked the way uh, that that turned out. And I did some experiments like with this guy and it was real cool having the uh, illumination, like the, the green over top of the line a little bit. Like you yeah. can see the black line, but it has a green tint to it, which is not something that you can do with this method where you're lay layering on the black line over top. So... Uh, Maybe. What I'm going to have to do in, in prep is go to Kinko's and mm -hmm. have them laser print me the copies, which is one extra step in the process that I have to see how I'm feeling at that time. If I want to fucking go out and get the shit, you know what I mean? Because that's half hour, hour out of your day. Um, but it's one of those things like um, it'll also be fun to me to see like the color stuff you start looking at yeah as you're working this way because i always think of jamie hewlett doing some really cool marker stuff and i, was thinking I think about sometimes him. he did that on top of line work yeah i was thinking about him with the, with these parts man yeah. i was thinking of fireball where you just have these like weird patterns and then you kick that white over top and, and it makes it sing man you kick that white over top it's sexy and i'm glad you mentioned kinko's because that's one of the things I, I keep thinking it was when we talked to dan Klaus, but i think it's actually a note in the back of the complete eight ball where he talks about going to Kinko's and getting the that tr negative the transparency made that goes on top and yeah. then having the blue line created there is when you talk about like architectural drawings and stuff you used to do that at Kinko's I don't know if they still do it or not probably I, I don't know why they wouldn't um, but it was it was cool you know like that's a real thing that pros did maybe ten years ago uh, the the printer has become a very important part of my process for a lot of things, scaling things and light boxing, mm -hmm. uh, printing out blue lines, printing out my own blue line grids. It's become a very important part of my process. And this is yet another application. Uh, these blue lines are just printed out on marker paper on my actual, you know, workforce 2340 or whatever the fuck I Amen. have. Amen. I'm glad to hear you say that too, because I know there's a lot of makers that watch this show mm -hmm. and the tools that we have access to, like use them to their fullest potential. Totally. Because like these are really powerful tools, you know, like a cheap printer can do this. It's true, so, man. Take advantage of what you have access to. And we're shooting this Kayfabe video on my iPhone and I'm going to be editing it on my iPad. Jimmy, you good to go? Yep. Kayfabers, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell. We'll notify you when new vids are available. Tell the people what's out there, man. Hulk Grand Design Monster Madness. The comic books are in comic shops now, so you can pick those up if you can't wait. Early 2023, the treasury-sized fluorescent green collection of Hulk Grand Design will be out. I highly recommend you pre-order that because we have had some delays with printing. You don't want to get stuck without a copy. Street Angel Deadly Squirrel Live is back in print after almost a year from Image Comics. Eight complete stories, perfect for the superhero or action comics fan in your life, including you, good for the upcoming Christmas season. And join me on patreon.com slash jimrug where you can download a bunch of my out-of-print zines and mini-comics, including a collection of all of my freelance covers with notes. So any any membership level is eligible to get that as soon as you sign up. Fantastic, man. Uh, Red Room, the anti-social network. Red Room trigger warnings. Murder on the dark web for fun and profit is the name of the game in my Red Room comics. The Latchkey Kids are going to be uh, backup stories in my next round of Red Room Comics coming out in 2023, but I'm serializing them on my Patreon right now, today. Three books get you the archive. You get all the Red Room stuff. Uh, you get everything I'm serializing. Every Tuesday, new stuff comes out. And three bucks get you the, that archive, man. It's less, less than a penny a page at this point. And actually, you know what? Uh, tomorrow, I'm going to be heading to Tokyo. 
And at the end of November, I'm going to be at uh, Tokyo Comic Con uh, signing Japanese hip hop family trees. I'm going to share a table with uh, Jeff Darrow. I'm going to have prints and all kinds of other stuff out there. So if you are in uh, the Tokyo region, the Tokyo prefecture, uh, come through the convention, say hi, come see me, hollow like you know me. Jimmy, what else do we have out there? Subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe newsletter at the links below this video. Pick up Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts, merchandise, mugs, fanny packs, and more at our spread shop, also in the links below this video. And that's a great way to support the Cartoonist Kayfabe channel. Given those marching orders, we'll be on our way, Jimmy. Make more comics.